All right, today we'll be talking about a new form for our lines. So in our last unit, we talked about slope-intercept form and standard form. The last form for lines is called point-slope form. So it's the only one we haven't talked about yet. Point-slope form is going to be y minus our y-coordinate from a point they give us equals our slope, and then in parentheses, x minus our x-coordinate that they give us. So if I jump in and I just start with an example, they're giving us the point 3, negative 1, and a slope of 2. So to write this, I'm going to do y minus negative 1 equals 2 for our slope x minus 3. Now, when you have this double negative here, it's really the same as adding a positive. So I'm going to simplify it to be y plus 1 equals 2 times x minus 3. You can also think of it as the opposite sign. This was a negative 1, now it's a positive 1. This was a positive 3, now it's a negative 3, if you want to think of it that way. So here on number 3, I'll have, well, let's move down to number 2 actually. Here I'll have y minus 0 equals negative two-thirds times x minus four. Now this y minus zero is really the same as just having a y. So I'm gonna simplify it to write it this way. Moving over to number three here, I'll have y minus three equals one-fourth times the quantity x plus eight. So since it was a negative, I want a plus there. When it's a positive, I can leave it as the minus. All right, and this would be the most simplified form of that. Okay, so that's how we write it in point slope form if we're given a point and a slope. Most of the time though, people want slope intercept form. Um, it's the simplest, easiest to graph typically in most people's opinion. So um, here it says write an equation in slope intercept form of the line. So really what we're going to use our point slope form for is an easy way to take a point slope written out equation and convert it to slope intercept form. So if I look at my graph. The reason I can't do it like we did two days ago is because I can't see where it touches the y-axis. I could still find my slope pretty easily, but I don't know exactly where it touches the y-axis just from my picture. So let's go ahead and start with the slope. It looks like here I'm going down one, two, three, four, and then over two to get from one point to the other. So when I simplify that, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Now, I'm going to take my slope here and one of my points. And it doesn't matter which one, so I'm just going to pick one, two. But you can pick the other point and get the exact same answer when we're finished. So here, I'm going to use this point and this slope to write an equation in point-slope form. So I'm going to have y minus 2 equals negative 2 times x minus 1. So that's our point slope form, but now I want to try to put in slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. So what I'm going to do is isolate my y. So I'm going to start by distributing to get rid of my parentheses. You get y minus 2 equals negative 2x plus 2. And then the last step would be to add 2 to both sides. So I'm going to have y equals negative 2x, and then 2 plus 2 gives us a positive 4 here. And even if I had chosen my other point, I would still end up with this exact same equation when I isolated for y. So that's another reason people really like slope-intercept form, is there's only one version of it. There's a whole bunch of point-slope form versions but, and even standard form, but there's only one slope-intercept form version. All right, so that's one way to get this. I'm going to show you an example because really there's two methods to do all of these. So I'm going to go ahead and show you point-slope form again first, so you get a second example of what I just taught you. 
Um, remember when this is written in function notation here, it's the same as an ordered pair. This is our input of 4 and our output of negative 2 is an ordered pair, 4, negative 2. And this ordered pair would be 8, 4. So first I have to find my slope. And yesterday, or I'm sorry, two days ago, all of our problems like this had a zero, and I told you I'd teach you how to find it without that zero, so that's what we're doing here. So if I do negative 2 minus 4, I'm going to get negative 6, and if I do 4 minus 8, I'm going to get negative 4. This would simplify to be a positive 3 halves. So now at this point, I just need to choose one of my points to use with my slope. So I'll choose 8, 4 to go with my 3 halves. So I'll do y minus 4 equals 3 halves times x minus 8. And now I'm just going to isolate for y. y minus 4 equals 3 halves x minus 12, I believe. 24 halves would be 12. And then I'll add 4 to both sides to get 3 halves x minus 8. So that's the first method. The second method is to use our slope. So no matter what in both methods, you have to do this piece first. That's going to happen no matter what. Always find your slope first. But now that I have my slope and two points to choose from, I can use my slope-intercept formula where I know slope is 3 halves. And I can use one of my points. So let's say I use 8, 4 again. And I can plug in 4 for y and 8 for x. And I can solve this to find b. So 3 halves times 8, again, would give us 12. And if I'm trying to isolate b here, I'll subtract 12 from both sides and get negative 8. And now that I know my y-intercept is negative 8, I can rewrite my equation again to have 3 halves for my slope and negative 8 for my intercept. So no matter which way you do it, you have to do this part circled first to find your slope. And then it's just whatever you think is easier. When I was in school and I took algebra, I thought this way was easier. Now that I've been teaching algebra, I feel like this way is easier. Um, it's really up to you. We're never going to tell you you have to do it a certain way, as long as you can get the correct answer. So let's look at one more example here. This one says, the student council is ordering customized foam hands to promote school spirit. The table shows the cost of ordering different numbers of foam hands. Can the situation be modeled by a linear equation? Explain. If possible, write a linear model that represents the cost as a function of the number of foam hands. So first we're going to decide, is this even a line? Which again is from our last unit. So we want to check and see, is this linear? So let's look at our pattern. From 4 to 6, it's plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. So that checks out. That's fine. Plus 2 all the way across. 34 to 46 is plus 12 plus 12, plus 12, plus 12. So it looks like that is also true all the way across. So cool, it's linear. So yes, it is possible. If possible, write a linear model that represents the cost as a function of the number of foam hands. So in our table, I've been showing you how to find this with two points. Here we have five different points. We just need to choose two of them to use. I like to choose the two smallest ones, so I'm going to choose these first two, 434 and 646, because I always think if I can choose a smaller number, it's easier to work with. So I'm going to start by finding my slope. I'll do 46. I'm going to move this down. I'm going to do 46 minus 34, and if you change the order, if I start with 46, I have to start with 6. So this will give me 12 over 2, which is also what we found in our table. 12 over 2 is 6. 
then you can use either method from the last slide. So I'm going to go ahead and show you find B because I've shown you two examples of using point slope. I'll show you another of find B. So I know that um, my slope is 6. And then I can use one of my points. So let's say I use 434. I'm going to plug in 34 for Y and 4 for X and solve for B. So 6 times 4 is 24. And then I'll subtract 24 from both sides, which will give me 10. So my equation will be Y equals 6X plus 10, meaning if we talk about foam hands, if we put it back in context, this is $6 for every single foam hand we order and probably a $10 flat fee um, just for them making them in the first place. So $10 up front and then $6 um, per foam hand if we wanted to put it back into context. All right, so that is it for your notes today. You now have a Delta assignment to work on.